in DevOps. So I've been I've been training people on Linux from past uh, five years, if you ask me, Ganesh. It's five years, right? We we we've been working together for for around five years. So um, uh, coming coming to the Red Hat. Uh, Long back when I started my life as a Linux administrator, uh, we used to work on six. So uh, now the current version is nine. I have worked with six, seven, eight, and nine. I also worked with uh, uh, worked with AWS as well as Azure. I am AWS. I am AWS uh, certified. One second, please. One second. I have to take this call once. So uh, yeah, where are we? So uh, I am uh, AWS certified uh, solution architect associate as well as uh, certified as admin. So uh, as I told you, I started my life as Linux administrator. It's a great way to start your career if you are uh, looking for a career change or if you are looking for a career upgrade. Some of you are already working as Linux administrators, which is a good thing. Um, you can you can also upgrade your careers into cloud uh, once you are good with. Uh, the the Linux part. So uh, even if you are a DevOps engineer, even if you are a cloud administrator or a cloud engineer, the the base remains Linux because once your Linux is strong, once your Linux is good, you can go anywhere and do anything. So uh, when I say you can go anywhere and do anything, it may be a bit exaggerating for you, but uh, it's not exactly like that because uh, I can show you a few things. Uh, for example, um, let me share my screen to you first of all. Um, can you can you see my screen? Yes. 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 So um, so when 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 coming to Linux, um, we will be learning different things in system administration as well as server administration, right? Most of the people here uh, who are working as Linux administrators already know. We have system administration. We have server administration. We have automation. And we have containerization or containers. These are the things which, we, which you will be seeing in RHCSA by RHCE NIAM certifications the latest one is nine i think uh, uh, eight uh, also rolled out um, but 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 i think he, i think they withdrew eight uh, currently the certifications which are going on are uh, rhcsa 9 and rhce uh, 9 if you ask me rhce part you will you will get ansible uh, and and automation and stuff like that and then also you have to learn shell scripting or the bash scripting, which is which is really really important for um, for doing the automation, right? Automation by using scripting, if you ask me, by using scripting. So when when I talk about the system administration, we will be doing disk management or the user management or uh, or the process management. These these will definitely stand out as basics for everything for example let us take let us take users and groups these users and groups when you go into the cloud aws path will become iam which is identity access management for example if you have uh, if you have disk uh, management here uh, 
uh, in AWS, it will become EBS. AWS it will become EBS, which is elastic block storage. Like that, if you, even if you have the smallest idea of the basics of Linux, you can go ahead and learn many things on your own. For example, if you ask me, uh, I have learned uh, AWS on my own uh, because because of the solid foundation I have in Linux. So any any time somebody comes to me and asks me, I always tell them that you know what you learn Linux and you're forty percent good. You're forty percent good with cloud. You're forty percent good with DevOps. You're forty percent good with every other thing until the SRE level. So Linux is that important. Why? Why? Because Linux stays as foundation for everything. For every server that is running, 90% of the servers are running on Linux these days. So why why is Linux so, so, so uh, popular for, for running your service is the question that will be coming into picture. So when you go ahead and and think about uh, you know um, why 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 Linux what is Linux? So first of all, Linux is a free and open source operating system that is based on Unix operating system. So what is an operating system? First of all, we are talking about operating system operating system. What is this operating system? First of all, many of you uh, are are pretty pretty basic level. Some of you are uh, are studying computers or could have studied computers. What is an operating system? Anyone? Can you can you tell me what is an operating system? Hello, anyone? Hello? Yeah, it's like the interpreter between the user and the hardware, sir. Correct. So, OS, for example, OS, Mm, not exactly the interpreter, I can call it as interface, right? So OS stands as an interface between hardware and the user, and the user. You know that user understands something called human readable language, isn't it? Human readable language, correct or not? Human yes. Human readable language. Then the hardware understands something called machine language. What is machine language? Machine language is nothing but bits and bytes of information, correct or not? Bits and bytes yes. of info. What is this bits and bytes of info? It is just the combination of zeros and ones. Correct or not? So now if I if I come to you and say zero one zero one 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 zero zero one one one, then you will not understand it. You need someone to translate it into something like hi, how are you? Now you can understand it. Correct or not? Being a human, because it is a human readable language. It may be English or it may be Telugu. It may be Kannada. It may be Hindi. It may be Marathi. Konkani. Anything. Anything. The human speak is human readable language. Whereas the machine language is always bits and bytes of information. So there should be an interface between these two, which translates from human readable language to machine and vice versa. So that the, the processing, the processing happens well. There are so many types of operating systems that are there. For example, there are single user, single tasking operating systems single user multitasking operating systems multi user multitasking operating systems and then there are server operating systems there are client operating systems there are so many kinds of operating systems first of all what is a single user single tasking operating system single user single tasking operating system is where one user can log in and they can perform one task at a time at a time. Example for this one is example for this one is MS DOS. If you ask me, the next one is single user multitasking operating system. Only one user can log in here, but he can perform multiple tasks. But he can perform multiple tasks. 
example for this is windows you may you may also ask somebody who's 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 working on windows may have asked me this question sir uh, there is a there is a feature called active directory in windows by using which multiple users can log in into the windows machine also but this is an add on without this add on only one user can log in into into the windows and they can perform multiple tasks for example let us have a look at my machine this is a windows machine i only logged in to this machine correct or not and i am writing on the notepad i'm i'm talking on zoom uh, i'm running my chrome you know and 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 i've been moving my cursor i've been doing multiple things at, at one time the next one is multi user multitasking operating system multi user multitasking operating system what is multi user multitasking operating system in this multiple users can log in can log in at a time at a time and they can perform multiple tasks for example let us take the example is linux in linux multiple people can log in at the same time for example um let us say there is alan there is ram who is teaching there is ganesh who is there for example there are three users called alan and then uh, then there is this user called ram and then there is this user called ganesh who three of these people can join and three of these people can log in at the same time and they can perform their own tasks every person is confined to a boundary called home directory inside linux why why are they confined if if we are letting ln go into ram ram's files then then there is a chance that ln can delete the files or uh, files of ram or ram can delete the files of ln that is why there is an abstraction between between the users who are logging in correct or not yes hello 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 yes yes so now multiple people can log in at the same time and in their home directories they can perform multiple things that is multi user multitasking operating system linux is a multi user multitasking operating system okay good linux is a multi user multitasking operating system very good fantastic now you have seen single user single tasking single user single user multitasking multi user multitasking operating systems then there are server and client operating systems server is something that serves a particular purpose correct or not for example there is there is this server called uh, uh, http server correct for example this http server is a web server for example when you are saying www.somethingsomething.com let us say uh, www.facebook.com what is happening here when there is www.facebook.com when you are entering into your your particular uh, your particular browser and then if you are entering www.facebook.com what is happening here it is just going to the world wide web server of the facebook correct or not it is just going and pinging the world wide web server of facebook.com and in the reply what is coming so client request for something server replies with the web page and the client does the acknowledgement this is called client server model so what operating system are we using we are using linux operating system and in this we are using server operating system server operating system first of all what is linux then then the question comes into picture linux linux is an open source operating system that is based on unix so so before linus torvalds the guy who 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 created the linux in in 1991 there was unix from the unix came linux linux is an open source operating system what is the meaning of open source many people will say it is free when they say open source many people will say that it is free no op open source means open source means not free open source means the source code with which with which the operating system is written 
is distributed freely to everyone to everyone so that they can make modifications to it and use it and linux is also a free operating system you can download the operating system and utilize it you can customize it you can you can pen down your own own settings because everything in linux is a file everything in linux is a file so when you want to change a setting you will go to your file and write something if you want to see some some device got connected or not you will go and check whether a file is existing or it or not everything in linux is a file so the source code which is which is used to write the operating system is given free so once 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 people said you can customize people said you can customize what will the world do it will start customizing everything for example uh, i said you can change the wallpaper of your phone what will you do what will be the first thing you can do you will go and do is to put a picture there for example if i say you can change the ringtone of your phone what will you do you will you will select the ringtone of your liking and you will put it there correct or not like that what happened in linux is the people started you know um what customizing their own version or flavor of linux those flavors are called distributions these distributions are merely the graphical user interface that is there plus the kernel that is there plus the type of shell that is there you'll understand these things in a moment don't worry about all these things so this whole package is called distribution from one distribution to other distribution the gui is graphical user interfaces change the shells change the kernel remains the same most of the times you know so these are the distributions what are the different kinds of distributions that are there in the market right now ubuntu for example kali mandriva manzaro you know puppy red hat uh, then uh, fedora um, then centos there are there are so many kinds mint arch many more mint arch and many more debian is also there debian there are, there are so many kinds of distributions or flavors of linux just like you you go to a candy shop or just like you go to an uh, go to an ice cream shop you can customize your own thing and get it and 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 make that particular thing run. that thing works with the distributions so out of all these distributions the enterprises chose something called red hat red hat is red hat enterprise linux that is why it is called enterprise linux because all the organizations chose it and this red hat we will be using the version 8 and 9 because some of the projects are still on 8 some of the projects migrated to 9 some of the projects are still on 9 so we will be using both 8 and 9 so now why why linux is something which is really 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 important if you ask me what are the key features you can modify distribute anything with the open source as stability and reliability when we are talking about the stability and reliability most of the servers which you are seeing will be run for hours and hours and hours sometimes months sometimes years without a reboot we will be running some servers so linux has that stability and reliability that is why it is really important to make some critical systems for example if you want something to be up on the internet all the time you can choose linux and then there is security for example let us say uh, in windows earlier in windows if you remember when you put the pen drive there used to be virus problem correct or not there used to be worms and worms and frozen Frozen is something where you will be seeing .exe file. For example, there is music, then there will be music.exe. If there is a file, there will be file.exe. Remember, we use it to put those, those pen drives with viruses and clean operating systems. 
we used to format our own machines all the time correct or not hello hello yes yes so what was happening back then whenever you run an executable file that executable file will be running inside c usually in the c you will be having your operating system correct or not once the exe runs in the c the whole operating system will get corrupted due to the virus so like that windows has some you know some backlogs when we compare it with the linux linux has something called distributed file system this distributed file system will be like an inverted tree it grows downwards for example it will start with root and then it will come to the first level directories and then there will be second level directories and then there will be third level directories and it will go on go on go on go on like that for example there is a directory there is a subdirectory then there is a super subdirectory then there is a super super subdirectory like that and inside that there are some files like that the tree will grow downwards if you see so that is why linux has something called inverted tree architecture and even if you connect a particular pen drive that particular pen drive is connected to a folder out of that folder that virus will not go for example let us say uh, everything in linux starts with forward slash for example under slash mnt you have connected your pen drive now the virus will just stay in slash mnt it will not go to forward slash and affect your whole operating system that is why linux is foolproof that is why we also call linux as secured operating system and then there is customizability for example a user wants something to run run like something for example you want a process to run just like you want it you can customize it if you want to if you don't want to use a shell you can take it off if you want to use a particular shell you can install it if you want to make some changes to your server you can do it if you want to remove some uh, some components you can do that anything can be customizable inside linux that is why linux is a top choice what are the advantages it is an open source operating system it is highly highly customizable it is secure and stable but what are the disadvantages when people talk about disadvantages people always talk about being less user friendly uh, requiring more technical knowledge limited software compatibility etc etc and etc but a linux administrator a linux administrator always loves his server because because he can do tedious tasks tedious tasks by running simple commands simple commands yes you may you may have you 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 may have uh, the uh, the requirement to learn so many commands but at the same time once you are good with the commands you can make or break your servers easily so for example let us take uh, let us take we are copying files of 4.5 gb from one one directory to other directory or from pen drive you are copying 4.5 gb into your laptop how much time will it take it really depends upon what kind of usb you are using correct or not usb 3.0 usb 4.0 or or some something like an ssd with a thousand mb uh, thousand mbps speed right it depends on the speed still it will take a lot of time in windows to copy that 4.5 gb but when you are copying that 4.5 gb with linux it will happen in seconds because you will be using a command called cp for copying it so why is it so fast because you won't be having in a huge graphical user interface what is the difference between graphical user interface and the command line interface graphical user interface is click click go next next finish you know you just you just open it you just minimize it you just maximize it you just close it 
you just restore it you 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 make it get back again these are all the things which we will be doing in gui it is just click click go when compared to the click click go the the cli when we are talking about the cli is command line interface you write write and go you get your hands dirty to do things for example if you want to make uh, make changes to a particular service you will go and edit some configuration file called .conf file by using a command called vi vi is a visual editor command which we will be talking about in in coming days so whatever you think as a big task can be done with the smaller smaller commands so getting an idea about about 200 to 250 commands will make you a master in handling the servers without a problem so that is one thing that will also come into picture now now when when we are talking about the limited compatibility you don't need all all the thousands of softwares that are there which will be working uh, with the client machines for example you won't be running vlc media player on a server right you will be using the server operating system like a server operating system. You won't be using it as a client operating system. Then limited software compatibility is, is also one nonsense people will say. The next thing is customization. You can customize anything. You can customize your graphical user interface. You can customize your desktop. You can customize your commands. You can customize your shell. You can customize uh, the components that are there. You can customize your disk. You can customize anything in Linux and use it accordingly. For example, if you don't want to use this kernel version, you can change the kernel version and use it also. It is like taking out the heart of the operating system and putting a new heart into the operating system. So it is very, 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 very customizable when you when you ask me. Why is CLI better? We all we already spoke about why is CLI better. Why is CLI better? Because after executing a small command, a big task can be achieved. For example, if you want to copy from somewhere to somewhere, you click on the you click on particular uh, particular folder. Once the folder opens, then go into one other folder, then copy all the files that are there, then right click, then copy. These are all the things which you will be which you will be doing to paste something. Correct or not? Yes. No. In Windows. For example, in Linux, what happens? In Linux, you will be using CP. For example, I want to copy from uh, directory one. For example, I want to copy to directory two. Just give directory one and directory two. Over, it will be done in seconds. So once you are good with the command line interfa interface, you can call yourself a pro user of Linux. Unless and until you, you can't really uh, call yourself a pro user. There are so many types of uh, distributions. Why choose Red Hat? This is the question that will come into picture most of the times. So many of the operating systems like Ubuntu are so user friendly so that they, they are like client operating systems sometimes. But with Red Hat, it is particularly made to be run as a server. For example, for example, you take a Ferrari and you take, uh, um, you take something like uh, uh something like uh, land rover land rover is made to 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 go off-roading you know a lamborghini is 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 a supercar that goes on the flat roads you can't you can't really take it into the take it into the mountains and 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 drive it so it's like that so when when we are talking about the ubuntu ubuntu is like ferrari you know if everything runs smooth it runs smooth red hat is is like that that range rover that goes on goes into the mountains for off roading. You can do anything. You can customize anything. You can use any feature, any feature you want, or you can make it as make it into any of the servers you want. For example, you want it to be an FTP server, which is a file transfer protocol server. You can do it. If you want it to be a web server, you can make it a HTTP server. If you want, if you want it to become a mail server. You can make it an SMTP server. If you want your operating system, you, your server operating system to give the give or uh, or assign IP addresses, you can make it DHCP server. If you want uh, your server to do IP address to hostname, hostname to IP address conversions, you can make it a DNS server. 
So like this, you can make your Red Hat server into any server and make it work wonderfully without a glitch or without a problem. So after this, we have to talk about something called architecture of Linux. To understand the distributions even better, we have to talk about something called Linux architecture. Let us let us go ahead and draw a diagram here. So uh, the first thing which you will be seeing here is hardware. On to the hardware, there is kernel. On to the kernel, there is something called shell. On to the shell, there is something called applications. This is called Linux architecture. This is applications. This is shell. This is kernel. This is hardware. For example, let us say this is applications. And this is a shell. And this is kernel. Kernel. And the last one here, what you're seeing is hardware. So now let us have a look at each and every component inside the Linux architecture. First of all, the first and foremost is hardware. Hardware understands what? Machine language. This is the physical component of components of your operating system or your machine. For example, your motherboard, your RAM, your processor, your keyboard, your monitor, everything is hardware. The next one is kernel. Kernel is like heart of the operating system. It sits between shell and hardware. So it acts as an interface between shell and hardware. Whatever application gives the command, the command is taken by the shell. Shell gives it to kernel. Kernel gives it to hardware. For example, let us say, um, let me let me show you my server uh, so that you will understand it better. Uh, I will be logging in into my AWS server. Um, meanwhile, I'll show you a few commands also. You'll understand it better that way. Let me get connected to my machine once and then we will see how the architecture works. Don't worry about all these things. I'll explain you all these things in the later classes. Just focus on some commands for now. So now I don't have any, you can see here, I don't have any, any GUI. It is just CLI. This is called CLI. The white letters and the black, the black hole thing which you are, the white letters and the black hole thing which you are seeing here is called CLI. Let me log in as the administrator root account. Okay. Once I logged in, let us say, for example, I am, let us say, for example, I am running something called, uh, uh, called, let us say, date. The command that I am running is date. So this is called terminal. This is also called terminal. This is one kind of application that is there. So what is happening? Application is giving a command called date. So this date command, what happens now? Your shell, which is the command line interpreter, takes the date and gives it to the kernel. And the kernel gives it to the hardware. Okay. Uh, yeah, here uh, the 01 format uh, will be changed. Then... For the date, an answer will come now. Enter. This is the answer. This is the answer for date. So now what happens? So now, what happens here? 
So whatever is the output here, this output will be generated by the hardware. It is given to the kernel. Kernel takes it and gives it to shell. Shell gives it to applications. And on your screen, you can see the output. What is shell? Shell is a command line interpreter. It acts as an interface between the applications and the kernel. It takes the commands written into the terminal and processes them using the kernel and hardware which are low-lying layers. Understood? The next one is applications. Applications are the general applications which you will be using. It may be a terminal, it may be a clock, it may be a notepad, it may be anything. So whatever you do, should be going through this architecture and coming back so that you will be getting whatever output is required. There are so many types of shells available. When we are talking about the shells, there are so many types of shells available. The default shell here in Red Hat is Bash. Bash is the default shell. Then there is SH, then there is KSH, then there is CSH, then there is TCSH, and there is fish, FISH. There are so many types of shells available. Once the shell changes, the command, the commands will also change. This is one thing which is really important. So then why are these many shells available? Is the question that will be coming into picture. Why are these many shells available? For example, Linux is not there from now. It is there from 1990s. Now, Somebody knows SH, somebody else knows KSH, somebody else knows CSH. But the core functionality of what they are doing will remain the same. But SH commands are different from BSH. KSH commands are different from BSH. CSH commands are different from KSH. Any, 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 any shell you pick, it has a particularly unique command set available. So you may know KSH, I may know BASH. So that is the reason why you have list of shells available and you will be having so many shells available inside Linux so that tomorrow somebody comes and says, I know TCSH, I don't know Bash. You can give them the access of TCSH so that they can run the commands of TCSH and work similarly like you. So this is why there are so many shells available. This is the demo. You may ask any questions if you have. You can ask me any questions if you have about your career, about Linux, about the curriculum and all the things. And about the curriculum, when we are talking about the curriculum, curriculum, you might have got the curriculum. We are following uh, RHCSA and RHCE. Uh, and we are particularly focusing on eight and nine. You will be learning both 8 and 9 here. You will be learning the differences between 8 and 9. And also you will be learning shell scripting as a complementary thing. Shell scripting is not included here. But we are giving the shell scripting part. Shell scripting in RHCSA may be very small. But we are giving shell scripting. Then we are also doing the advanced shell scripting. Where you will be writing some real-time scripts and getting information. And then we will also be dealing with Ansible but since it is the part of RHCE. And we will also be talking about the containers. This containers has been the new concept which, uh, which was introduced from 9. So now if you have any questions, you can ask me. Any questions? Hello, any questions? Yes, no, hello. Jatin, Alan, Saurabh. Nothing from my side. So scripting is just the basics, right? No, no, scripting is not just the basics. We'll dig deep into the scripting. We'll we'll do scripting for around uh, uh, seven to eight days. Okay. We we will be uh, we'll be seeing different things like said, uh, AWK. We'll be going into the log files. We'll be getting information. We'll be starting services by using scripting. We'll be seeing different, different things using scripting. There, there are loops. There are conditions. There are so many things in scripting. Okay. It's not a small thing. It's not the. It's not just the basics we are talking about. Anything else? Anyone? 
Yes, Malik, please go ahead. Can't hear you, Malik. Uh, can you can you write into the chat, please? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Yeah, like after taking this course, so basically, what will be the takeaways or what will be the title we are going to get it? You know. So uh, after finishing this course, you can be able to finish uh, RHCSA nine as well as RHCE nine, uh, which can make you Red Hat certified uh, system administrator and Red Hat certified. Uh, uh engineer uh which is uh which is an automation engineer um you can also take away you can also get uh uh the basics of devops if you ask me because uh you have the ansible uh is there so uh you will be getting some uh good insights into um the technicality of 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 what uh it needs right now so overall, according to you, I mean, uh, if you're talking about next generation technology like AI, ML, and all this technology, so where do you think that, you know, like uh, this course can this, be this add remains, value this, for us? This remains the basic for everything. Okay. This remains the basic for everything. Because this is the foundation for everything, if you ask me. Because you will be working with servers all the time. So all the servers are Linux servers. Okay, so we'll be focusing mo mostly for the server server side. Correct. We are we are doing the server side. Uh, what about in the client side? Even if you if you are learning the server side, you can use it for the client side also because because ninety percent of the time when you're uh, when you're seeing something, um, if you if you learn how to handle a server, handling the client is so easy. Well, yeah, but time. but mostly I think the client side they are using GUI. So, do you think that uh, it will most be of the people won't be using GUI when when they are using Linux? Okay. Yeah, because because that is one one nonsense you want to avoid in uh, in Linux. That is why people come to Linux. They want uh, they want to get their hands dirty and and they want to perform multiple tedious tasks by using small commands. Okay. If you are using the same GUI, you can you can literally stay in windows and do whatever you want to do correct or not got it thank you yeah any anything else no it's okay any, anything else from anyone saurabh so jatin alan saurabh any questions no Ram. thank you okay then Thank you. Um, Ganesh, you can take over. Jatin, do you have Yes, I do have a uh, Regarding the, like, uh, for the Jatin, you have to speak a bit louder. Okay. Is it now audible, sir? Yes, yes, it is audible. Yes. I'm uh, asking regarding the lab, sir, like, uh, as I'm preparing for the certification. So Correct. As we Everything will be hands-on. We won't be doing any uh, any PowerPoint presentations. Okay, great. Everything will be hands-on from day one. So day one, you will be sitting in a lab and doing things. Uh, this will be on like simulation or on direct servers. We can do the practice. It's not the simulation. We'll be running servers in the cloud as well as uh, the virtual machines and do it. Okay, thank you. It's not the simulation. We we will be dealing with the servers directly. Okay. Mm, anything else? And like how we take away with the classes, sir, on daily basis? Um, that's Monday to Friday, uh, one hour. The time will be decided, and uh, Ganesh will let you know about the timings and other things. <laughs> Anything else regarding the course, regarding the job, regarding the market? Yeah, some like regarding the entry level of like. If you want the entry level job, you can you can definitely learn Linux and give it a try because uh, you can go into uh, application support or server side support or uh, system engineering, apps, many many other things. Okay. So if you are starting fresh, it's a good good thing to do. How about for senior consultants, IT consultants? Senior yes. IT consultant without Linux is, is a joke, actually. Okay. 
so uh, they need it it's 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 something which is mandatory for them Even even if they are into development these days, they are into full stack development. They are also working with the Linux servers. So everything is everything today is, you know, getting getting into the single basket. So yes. Anything else? No thanks. Thank you, then. Okay, Ganesh, you can take over, I guess. Yeah. So. Oh. Any questions from anyone? So you can call me tomorrow. Uh, we can discuss about the course and timings and everything. Uh, most of we we are planning to start the classes from like Thursday, and will be it will be like Monday to Friday only. So uh, let me call you tomorrow, like one by one. I'll discuss with you personally if you have any questions. All right then, shall I? Thank you. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir.